Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Haiti's exuberant, brightly colored paintings have bought the island international fame. But did the devastating earthquake in January end all that, burying the artistic spirit along with the masterpieces? Will Haitian art and culture climb out of the rubble? We travel there to find out. It doesn't come into my head to do something that I see, or something realistic. Most of all, I prefer impressionistic, surreal, a bit naive. Since he was 10, Prince Luke has known that he was born to paint. Now at 33, he is one of Haiti's upcoming artists, living and working in Jacques Mel. This French colonial city by the Caribbean dates back to the 17th century. Long favored by Haitian artists, the city's carnival has always been a highlight when its legendary artworks take to the streets. But in this year's carnival, all that changed. Prayers for the dead filled the air rather than dance music. The massive earthquake one month earlier left Haiti and its people in tatters. It also left unseen devastation to the spirit of Haiti's artists. Haitian art and culture has always been seen as a symbol of hope. The joyful, vibrant paintings that fetch thousands of dollars in the United States and Europe were the country's greatest source of foreign currency. But for many Haitian artists, the earthquake changed their lives beyond all recognition. Prince Luke, single parent to two-year-old Samara, was one of them. On the day of the earthquake, he had been working in his studio at Jacques Mel's Art Center, once a thriving hub of local artists. He left early and went home. And just after he arrived, it happened. You could hear a noise, but you didn't know where this noise was coming from. He grabbed Samara and ran as their house collapsed around them. Everybody, instead of standing up, threw themselves on the ground. But we didn't know if the ground was going to open up. If we were going to fall inside, we didn't know anything. In those 35 catastrophic seconds, most of the house Prince Luke had spent years building fell before his eyes. Beneath the rubble of his studio, he also lost almost all his paintings. But he considers himself one of the lucky ones. With an estimated 300,000 people killed across Haiti in those fateful moments and millions left homeless in one of the largest humanitarian disasters the world has ever seen, Prince Luke and Samara were indeed lucky. But while their lives were saved, the future of Haitian art lies in the balance. Much of Haiti's precious artwork, symbols of Haitian culture and the people's identity, were lost in those seconds when the earth heaved. This museum houses all the artistic legacy of the grand period of Haitian painting. Patrick Villers, himself a well-known sculptor together with art dealer Axel Lioto, sift through the wreckage of the Musée Collège du Saint-Pierre. It once housed one of the most important collections of Haitian art in the country. This collection here is where you find all the works of the masters of Haitian painting, the great artistic movement that was born in 1945. I came here today, after the earthquake, to try and save the collection because it's in danger. 
It's a painting by a Haitian artist who lives in France. It's not only the danger from thieves who have already helped themselves to some of the pieces, but also the damage to the building itself leaves the masterpieces open to the rains. But for many of Haiti's artworks, it is already too late. As well as priceless pieces lost in the rubble, many of the culturally important buildings themselves are now reduced to piles of debris, taking unique murals with them. These buildings, almost 80% of which are irreparably damaged, are another important part of Haiti's cultural patrimony. Economically, um, culture can save this country because it has a, an enormous amount of talent in all ways. Tiluk Buani, Haiti's representative of UNESCO, the UN's cultural agency. If this country can rebuild itself, it's going to do it on its culture and it's going to do it on its artisans. Some of the oldest and most culturally significant buildings are the churches and seminaries, most of which are now in ruins. Churches are very important. They have a very strong symbolic and uh, cultural value for the people. This is the way people would meet and get together and sing and get... Uh, that's, that's, that's the basic identity of the country. And for many artists, as well as losing their works, their studios and their cultural artifacts, the earthquake struck hardest at their very identity. After the earthquake, I didn't really know who I was anymore. I'm now praying to my genie. His genie, or his artistic muse, is sometimes a Christian saint and sometimes a spirit from the voodoo ceremonies. Like many Haitians, his identity is deeply influenced by both. Our culture, our strength, it's rather a kind of battle. It's a sharing. I want to go back to our culture, to show it how it is. Sometimes my work is on this voodoo thing. In Port-au-Prince, artist Nassius Joseph's life and his work are intrinsically influenced by the other side of Haitian culture, Christianity. He thanks divine intervention for having survived the earthquake. I was in church attending a service. We felt the movement of the earth. Jesus. Everybody called Jesus. This was the only name, the only sound. By a miracle, God did not let the church fall on us, and we came out safely. This is something we can't explain. It was marvelous. But despite the survival of his entire family since the earthquake, 71-year-old Nassius has almost lost his spirit to continue working. Considered one of the country's foremost wood sculptors, his intricate pieces in cedar and oak grace art galleries and private collections around the world. A running theme throughout his work is angels. At this gallery in the upmarket district of Petsionville, which remained relatively unscathed by the earthquake, gallery owner and patron of the arts, Axel Liotto, encourages him to go back to work. But although this gallery survived, the market for artworks didn't, leaving Nassius without an income. Since the earthquake destroyed his home, he and his family have been living in squalid conditions in a makeshift camp. 
My house is cracked. You can't sleep in it. That's why we're behind here. Nasius, his wife, and two of his five children now live alongside an estimated 1,500 others in this camp alone in a similar plight. There is nothing, no food, completely bare. We are still alive, but we have no means. Meanwhile, Prince Luke, the painter, believes that creativity is an important part of the country's healing process. Several days a week, he volunteers in the Art Creation Foundation for Children in Jacmel, which provides both a refuge and a diversion for poor children traumatized by the earthquake. As well as learning a useful skill for the future, they also now have an outlet to express what they went through. We should demonstrate what we have experienced, and that's why they are working on the walls, with their impressions, their feelings, with their fear. When you go inside the building, you see that they are beginning to be inspired. Prince Luke, too, is struggling to comprehend the catastrophe through his art and is finding a new style. Before, I preferred the colors that spoke of life, that have more elements, that are more joyful, because I love gaiety. There's too much death, too much havoc, too many things have happened in front of me. I've gone back more deeply into that darkness. There is a tiny bit of color that remains. Because I think that if there is life, there is hope. <laughs>